Hello my curial friends from all across the world. This video is dedicated to you. If you are an actuarial student or current actuary or you are an actuarial faculty or you happen to be an administrator of some actuarial body, this video is dedicated to all of you. And this is the first video in the series called Examiner Reports Concerns ERC Videos. As you all know, IFOA is a very large actuarial body and students of many geographies, many nationalities benefit by taking IFO exams. Now, uh, the examiner reports published by IFO on its websites have many issues that cause concern. Anybody who is interested in the educational quality standards of actuarial science is left worried by things that have appeared in the exam. Now some of these concerns may be regarded as serious but some are not that serious. In the first and the second video I have chosen to bring to your notice some very light concerns. From third video onwards I will discuss very serious type of concerns. But first, let me establish the existence of concerning points in these reports and also have some intense focus on the operational aspects of the IFO exam marking system. Later on, we come to more serious issues. So, video 1C will also have its counterpart video 1E in which I will explain in detail how I got the, the different answer from IFO and how I convinced myself that that different answer is in fact the correct answer. And reasonableness checks were applied to both the IFO answer and my answers, right? So the, that part will be discussed in elaboration or exposition video called E-videos. C-videos are just for raising concerns. And in this video, the focus is on CM2A exam of September 23, specifically question number 9. When the examiner report gives the answer 0 0.204, which does not make any sense at least to me, and no matter which approach I try, I end up with the answer 1.022. This numerical inaccuracy is not a big issue. What is much more problematic is the commentary to that question which talks about called final adjustment, final adjustment. That, that final adjustment is required to get to the right answer. But again, what we find is no elaboration, no explanation. If you read any examiner's report, it starts with this objective that these reports are meant for the benefit of future actuarial learners as a good learning aid. So for that objective to be met, there has to be some explanation or elaboration of what this final adjustment is, especially when this final adjustment being needed is nowhere mentioned or discussed in the official study materials, neither it is mentioned anywhere in the previous examiner's reports. So if, if it is a novel idea or a novel approach, how will the student divine it without being told I never needed any final adjustment. So what that final adjustment really means that is the second concern I will raise and third concern is that how this error could make its way to be published on the website. What is the system being followed here? I wonder is there no verification required in the process or is there no exchange between checkers and examiners? about the validity of the answers. So this obviously raises another question that what about those students who have been failed unfairly for producing the right answer just because they knew better, they did better and they handled the exam stress also and produced the right answer which the examiners could not produce in their examiner's report even when they were working without any exam stress. Now these questions become more important when we look at the magnitude of the exercise. More than 1000 copies have been marked. And mind you, one copy is marked by at least two checkers. So how come nobody came across this issue? Or if they came across this issue, why they did not raise it? And still allowed and the error to be published 
on the website. So operational failure, unfairly failing students, confounding future students, not um, allowing it as a ground for exam appeal, sir, that your answer is wrong. Now, it is quite possible that you you may wonder that why, why take all this pain of making this video, putting them in social media, right? Why don't write to the IFO and get these things sorted out? But I was told that they checked their membership records. They found out that I have never been their member. So they said that they would not engage with me on any discussion regarding their study material or their exams. So in that way, I am constrained, I am constrained to adopt this route and putting this on social media. The aim is to stand for the helpless students who may lack the courage of conviction or the confidence to doubt the officially published answer and to bring justice to all those who have been the victims of these wrong answers and operationally deficient exam marking process. My objective is not to target any person, no targeting of any individual whosoever. The only objective is to help improve the system, to help remove the operational failures and professional negligence from the exam marking system of IFOA. This will help both students as well as faculty whom I am addressing this video to at an individual level all the unfortunate victims of IFOA, no matter which subject, no matter which part of the globe you are, I am trying to reach out to you. If you plan to appear for IFOA exams in future, I am trying to reach out to you also that you should not lose hope and confidence when you uh, encounter these wrong answers which do not match with your right answer. So you will have a source for verification and validation. I also want to reach out to all actuarial teachers out there for dialogue and healthy exchange of ideas. On the institutional side, I would like to address to the board of examiners of IFOA led by Ms. Sarah Hutchinson because this particular examiner's report has been published under her name and authority. I would like her entire team to take notice and ensure that such mistakes are not repeated. The current president and the president-elect representing the topmost decision-making authority at IFOA so that they bring about a transformation and such issues are rooted out. Thirdly, I would like this video of mine to reach International Actuarial Association. They have a mandate to ensure quality standards of in actuarial domain all across the world and they happen to be the best place neutral experts to deliver a final verdict on the points that I am raising and finally they also have a mandate to exercise an oversight on the functioning of IFO's education and examination. On the final parting note I will say that I am adding screenshots of the complete transcript of this video so that you can read out my objectives in detail, my target audience in detail and my reasons in detail. Please do feel free to write to me or to call me. From my side I will try to provide you as detailed an explanation as possible so that you are not confused and you don't lose confidence.